also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel and the tradition of Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke highly of him and were amazed at the words that came from his mouth. They also said, Isn't this the son of Joseph and Mary? He said to them, Surely you'll quote me the proverb, Physician, heal yourself. And say, Do hear in this native place of yours the things we have you heard done in Capernaum. He said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in their own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine was over the entire land. It was to none of those that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with anger. They rose up, and they drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which the town had been built. They wanted to hurl him over the, the cliff headlong. But Jesus passed through their midst, and went on his way. This is the gospel of the good news of our salvation. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. By the words of the gospel, may our sin be blotted out. Amen. 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 As always, it is good for us to be here, especially on this chilly <laughs> The readings today are awesome. They tell us so much. And in fact, the second reading basically is the homily. St. Paul, who obviously is the author of a lot of the New Testament, had one thing in common with you and me. Any idea? He was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. No. He was a Hebrew. Then Paul never saw Jesus physically. Okay. St. Paul came onto the scene later on. St. Paul came onto the scene after he had been persecuting. the entire Jewish community. In fact, when, in fact, this past week, on the 25th, we celebrated what we call the conversion of St. Paul. When his eyes were opened and he was literally thrown off his horse as he was going to persecute the community. There's, there's, I don't know where I came across it, but there was a movie very simply called St. Paul. It might have been on Netflix. And it was one of the best things I'd seen the way it was portrayed. And this was a man who, as I said, like us, never physically saw Jesus, other than Jesus, quote, appeared to him. And but he becomes one of the greatest apostles. He's not listed with the 12, but one of the greatest apostles. And it took me, Joe, a long time to like him. Because I, I, all during my, quote, growing up, as we all tend to grow up, thanks be to God, 
I was not a fan of St. Paul until there was something, I forgot exactly which line it was, but that just struck me. Almost as if I was knocked off a horse. And I now look at and listen to this man with a tremendous amount of respect, with a tremendous amount of confidence in his words. And then we have the words of Jesus. In the gospel this morning, we hear that, as we did last week, that he was welcomed into the synagogue. And to preach in a synagogue in Jesus' day, you didn't have to be ordained. You were asked if you'd like to read. And there were no books. They were given scrolls. And the person who took care of the scrolls was had a very high position in the community. It was his job, only his job, no women. It was his job to take out the scrolls, to put them back. It was his job to keep the synagogue clean. The word synagogue means coming together, meeting place, coming together. Yeah. It's not the connotation of the church because to the Jewish mind, the only temple there was was in Jerusalem. And Jesus can tell me, and he's talking to me, and he's reading. And when he sits down, that means there's going to be a lesson taught. Okay? Because in the, in the days of Jesus, the teacher always sat down to teach. <coughs> and that's why, if you remember, further on in the Gospel of Luke, which we'll get to, and as I've told you before, I love the Gospel of Luke, so be prepared. Okay? We... <laughs> When Jesus goes to visit Martha and Mary, okay, Martha's in the kitchen, getting together. Someone's in the kitchen with Martha. Someone's in the kitchen and Martha's getting ready. And Martha gets upset. Why? Because she was left to do the work by herself. But where's her sister? Where's Jesus? The scripture says very simply, sitting at the feet of Jesus. She's learning from the master. Okay? And that's what we are doing. Learning from the master. Okay? Physician, heal yourself. Jesus wasn't able to do anything with his, where he came from. Because the people had no faith. Faith. This is what we hear this morning. What a gift we have. And yet the greatest of these is love. Pray for me. I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and all now.